Hi everyone, this is Alex from the Drugs Blog. So on Friday or Thursday, I think it was Thursday, I done uh, a predictions for the weekend's games on Instagram. So basically I put what the score would be, what my I thought the score would be. So today I'll just be reacting to them and say, saying what the score actually was. So I'll just get straight into it now. So the first prediction is Derry 2, Sligo 1. So I predicted Derry to be uh, Sligo, who are on zero points coming into the game in their home ground. But no, Sligo going back a 2 0 win somehow. Don't know how, but fair play to Sligo. Considering they were on zero points, they'd lost all five of their games so far in the season. And Derry haven't had a good season either, but last season they finished fourth. Um, and the Brandywell, that's not an easy place for anyone to come to either. So that's a great result for Sligo. And I think the promotion, or no, not promotion, uh, to stay up, I think it could be on for them to stay up if they keep getting good results like that one. Number two was Dundalk 3, St. Pat's 1. I think everyone thought that Dundalk were going to win this game. But so Dundalk go and draw against Pats in Oreo Park once again. Pats, that's a great result for them. And they are now fifth in the table, I believe. But for Dundalk, it's not. And that leaves Rovers five points clear at the top. So it looks like Rovers are they're running away with the league at the moment. because And that result could uh, haunt Dundalk. But surprising result for Pats. I, was, I thought Dundalk were going to get an easy win. But um, now after the Rovers result, obviously they're five points ahead. We'll get on to that in a minute. But that's a great result for Pats. Um, and it was Robbie Benson who scored for Pats against his former club Dundalk. Uh, I was watching the game actually and it was a good game. The third prediction that I made was Shelburne 2, Waterford 1. It's another wrong prediction, very poor from Shells, that's a very poor result for them. But for Waterford, what a result that is. John Martin's 71st minute goal, I think it was, secured three points for the Blues. That's, um, now Waterford are sitting at fourth actually, that's really good for them. And Shells are in sixth, but it was in Talca Park as well, so everyone expected Shells to win considering they've had a great season so far. But Waterford pulled it out of the bag got a 1-0 win so good result and it's another wrong prediction so the fourth one i predicted rovers five finn hearts one i don't really know why i thought rovers would beat them so easily but um they did beat them three one it wasn't too much of a hard too hard for rovers jack uh, the goals coming from jack barn with a stunning free kick i think it was a no look free kick um uh, a goal from Dylan Watts and a goal from Graham Bark. They're now five points clear at the top and obviously I'm a draw the fan. I hope they win it, but it's only six games in. You never know, Dundalk could come back. Uh the first one I've got the first prediction that I've got that the team I said will win actually have won and are four predictions in, so uh yeah, I'm not too good at this, but it anyways, it's another good result for Rovers. Finn Harf sitting eight. They're still not in the relegation zone, but uh, it doesn't look like that. I I think they're gonna go down. The last one I made from the Premier Division was Cork two, Bohemians two. I don't really know why I thought Cork would get a result out of this game. It ended up with Cork suffering another another defeat. Uh, Bows on one nil. A third minute goal from Andre Wright, which le- which leaves Cork bottom place now with three points only. Joint bottom with Sligo, but Cork have only scored one goal, um, and Sligo have scored four. So both teams having a really bad season. I it would be weird to see Cork get relegated, but I think they could. You never know. They are one point. Uh, Bowers are one point behind Dundalk now. It's a great result for uh, Keith Long's men, not so much for Cork. Uh, but in Turner's Cross, obviously, all the games are going to be different now because there was no fans. If there was fans there, it probably could have ended up different if Cork had packed it out. Or same with Shell, same with Dundalk, same with Derry, same with Shamrock Rovers, same with all the games. But um, yeah, it's going to be hard for teams with no fans. It's gonna be just like a train to match some of the games. Um but it's a good result for Bowers as I said. So on to the first division now and the first prediction I made in the first division 
this is only game week four, I believe, in the first division. For some clubs, it was game week three. But the first one I made was Athlone, nil, Wexford, one. The prediction I made for the first division, uh, yeah, I, yeah, Wexford won. But I actually did think, after I made the prediction, that Athlone could have got a draw out of this game. But then they went in their own, tar- in their own ground and lost 3-1 to Wexford. I thought they could have got a point in the back of my head. I did think that, but it looks like they're going to have another terrible year. However, it is a good result for Wexford, and they have looked sharp um, since they came back. Well, not even, just since the start of the season, they have looked good. They don't look like they're going to have another 10th or 9th place finish. Um, they look like they could even get eight, uh, seventh place if they keep doing well, and they have signed a good few players like Janabi Amor signed him as well. Uh, he was play for draw up. Um, so that's a good result for Wexford and another terrible result for Athlone. The second one I made was UCD uh one Langford two. Uh, oh, what a result this is for UCD getting a nil nil draw in the UCD bowl. It's a good result for us as well, although Longford, that's only Longford's third game, so we're joint points with them and they can overtake us and uh, get two points behind Cabo. But it's a great result for UCD. That's put their season back on track considering the last game they had before coronavirus was a 5-1 loss against us. Um, But considering they didn't even lose, they didn't even get seed, that's a good sign. Um, it's a great result for them, obviously, but not for Longford. Although, as I said, they have a game in hand over us and Cabin Teeley. I was expecting Longford to even probably get more than to probably win more than two one, three one, four one even. Um, considering that they beat us. Um, but it's a great result, obviously, for UCD, and that could have just got their season back on track. The third prediction that I made from the first division was Galway 2, Cabin Teeley 1. I don't have a clue what I was thinking with this one, to be honest. Um, Cabin Teeley have had won three games, in had had three wins in three games, and now they have four wins in four games. They finished 2-0 to Cabo. Uh, hopefully, whenever we play them, hopefully we can get a result. Uh, it's disappointing for Galway once again because... A lot of people, they made loads of signings, Galway did, before the season. So a lot of people did predict them. A lot of good signings as well, like Michael Schligerman, uh, Kevin Farragher, a good few other people. So a lot of people did predict them to finish fifth or higher, even maybe even fourth or third. But now it looks like not a bad season. Sixth at most, I'd say they'll finish sixth. Cove could even have a better season than them. Um. They, so Cabo obviously are a new addition to the promotion race this season. I thought it was going to be only us and Longford, but it looks like Cabin Teeley could even be in for automatic promotion for four wins of four games. Obviously, four games in. Well, it's an eighteen late. It's an eighteen game season this year because of the pandemic and stuff. But it looks like they could be in with a real shot of promotion, especially through the playoffs if they don't get automatic. Number four was Bray 3, Cove 1. Again, I don't really know why I said Bray would win so easily. What was up for Cove, though, back in a nil-nil draw in the Carlisle grounds. Uh, they had to make the big travel up to Bray and still got a nil-nil draw. Uh, I was expecting Bray to win this, though. <laughs> Probably don't know why I was thought so, comfortable, so comfortably, but I did think they would at least win. Um, they don't get the three points and it looks like they're well they've had a good season so you never know um, but that's a bad result for them and it's an amazing result for Cove in my opinion Bray obviously they lost Andrew Moran and another player uh, Lee Kavanagh I think that was his name I uh, forget but they both went to Brighton in England so they've lost them too and they were obviously both good players very young uh, that's a blow but I think that they they could still be in with a shot of playoff promotion. Well, probably not promotion, but playoffs. But uh, after that, it seems unlikely. And it seems that Cove are going to have a good season now. And the final prediction from the first division that I made was Rovers B, nil, draw to four. I do, this was the worst prediction I made. I don't know 
obviously I'm a Drada fan. I was probably being a bit biased and obviously I think everyone has underestimated Rovers B. Uh, this didn't go to plan. Obviously, 40 seconds in, we went 1-0 down. 22 minutes in, we went 2-0 down. Uh, and then 28 minutes, we got a, Mark Hughes got a straight red for us. Made two changes in the 29th minute, not even from injury. Uh, we then made one of the players that came on got injured, Lucchini. So we got made another change. We had all our three subs gone in the first half. Uh, so then in the second half, Mark Doyle pulled one back and then Brandon Birmingham scored a screamer uh, in, the, I feel in, in the 82nd minute, I believe, uh, just outside the box and he smacked it into the top corner, had loads of power. It was an amazing finish. Uh, it's a terrible, terrible result for Drada, uh, but everyone did underestimate Rovers B, I, I believe. Uh, I didn't think they'd be as good as they actually were. You can say, like, yeah, they were playing uh, 18 players, which I don't really think is fair, but still, it was only two or one or two. Um, I, I'd i say it's a really good result for Rovers B, even though they are still ninth in the league, but a very disappointing result for Drada. So I know that we're six games into the Premier Division and four for most teams into the First Division, but I'm going to do my table prediction for the rest of the season, because even though there's only 18 games, so we're a third of the way through the Premier Division, um, I know it's really late to do it, but may as well while I'm making a prediction video and it'll make the video a bit longer. So I'll get on to that now. So for the Premier Division table, uh, who I predicted to finish 10th is Sligo. No, no, sorry. It was Finn Harps who I predicted to finish 10th. So I've gone for Finn Harps in 10th uh, to go down automatically because I just can't see them staying up another year. Um, yes, Ollie Hogan has done a great job with them uh, in the past. How long? He's been there a good while, actually. I, f I don't know exactly how long, but he's done a great job with them, yes. But it's they're also they're not really a good footballing team. Um, yeah, right. Obviously, I want them to go down. That's uh, everyone would say, like, oh, they're not a good footballing team if you lose against them, but they really aren't. They just kick it up long, kick it up long, and just their pitch as well. Yeah, they're they're getting a new stadium and it looks really good, but. The pitch now, it's not Premier League standard to be honest. Uh, I I do want them to go down, and I do t see I do see them going down automatically, but you never know. Sligo might go down automatically, and Cork might even. Um, I couldn't really see Cork doing it, but you never know with this league, anything can happen. So in ninth, I've gone for Cork. I've gone for Cork to, uh, go to finish ninth, but I think. If they do finish ninth and they go into the playoff, um, I think they would win it against most of the first division clubs. Probably not Longford and Drada, um, maybe Longford, maybe Drada. You never know. Um, but yeah, I've gone for them to finish ninth. Uh, I think they will stay up though. Hopefully they do stay up because it'd be weird to see Cork in the first division. Like what they won it in to tell they won the league in two thousand seventeen. I think it was, um. And then to three years later, be in the first division, just be weird. It'd be like Liverpool in three years' time being in championship. Although, yeah, they haven't had a great season and uh, Neil Fenn isn't really doing a good job with them at the moment. Uh, yeah, but I think they'll finish ninth in the playoff and they'll secure... I think they'll stay up, I'd say... But you never know, Drada could beat them if they get to the playoff final. Even Longford could beat them if they get to the playoff final. You never know at this league. Eighth place, I've gone for Sligo. Now, this is a bit of a mad prediction because Sligo, before uh, Friday's game, they had zero points in five games and had scored two goals and had. Yeah, so they hadn't. They'd lost every all five of their games. But. Now that they've beaten Derry 2 0 and they're not 10th anymore, they're 9th while they're joint, but they have a better goal difference than Cork. Um, I think they the chance for them, the hunt for them to stay up is on now that they've beaten Derry and the players will have a load of confidence 
obviously their game on Tuesday at home against Waterford is called off because one of the Waterford players uh, has suspected coronavirus system, uh, symptoms. So that's a blow for both clubs. Uh, but I would like to see them stay up. Again, it would be weird having them in the first division. But I could see it happening. It's unlikely though. But I've done it because you never know with this league, as I've said already a good few times. Um, but considering that I predicted Derry to win and then Sligo go and win and I got another few bad predictions, I think they could stay up. Hopefully they do, in my opinion. Seventh place, I've gone for Waterford. Uh, Waterford have had a great start. They're currently sitting in fourth place, actually, which is really good. Um, and they actually, they nearly even went extinct during the pandemic. Obviously, there was stuff going on with the club manager left, a few players left, their wages got cancelled and loads of stuff like that, a lot of, another few other stuff. But they bounced back, the first game back, uh, they beat Shells 1-0 in Talca Park. Don't know, I don't really know how, but no fans there. Shells had a packed it out, could have changed, the fans could have changed it, but... Uh, I'm not saying that Waterford was won because they hadn't. There was no fans there. They played a good game of football, and I think they could even finish sixth or even fifth, maybe. Uh, fourth isn't even very unlikely, but I'd say seventh, f sixth, fifth, and fourth will be tight. But I'm going for Waterford in seventh. Sixth place, I've gone for Shelburne. Yeah, it kills me to say it, but yes, Shelburne are gone are not going anywhere near relegation. Uh, they've had a great season. They had a great season last year. They they probably outplayed Dundalk in Talca Park earlier on in the season, even though Dundalk won two 0 But yeah, they've had a great start. Uh, although Dundalk did win that game, yeah, they did probably outplay them. They also made good signs this year, so I'd say it should be a good year for the Reds. Maybe he could have swapped Warford and Shells around. Maybe could have even pushed Shells in fifth. Or fourth wouldn't even be too unlikely, as I said, with Waterford. But uh, I can see them finishing sixth. I'd say that's reasonable. And I'd say Shells fans would take it for the first year back in the Premier Division after 10 years, I think it was. Um, yeah, as I said, they made really good signings. And I think that... They could, they could get higher, fifth or fourth, uh, third, no, they couldn't, because Bowes, Dundalk, Rovers, they won't get anywhere near them, but fourth, I'd say they could do that. In fifth, I've gone for Derry, uh, they've had a bad start, they're currently in seventh, but it's only six games in, yeah, it's an 18, league. It's an 18 game season, so we're third through technically, but... Um, I still can see them bouncing back and getting a fifth place. I can't see them getting Europe this year, considering the start they've had. But um, they should be competing for Europe, but I don't see it happening. They are competing for it most years, but it doesn't look likely this year. You never know, though. They could just win loads of games now and get fourth or third or I'd say, though, fifth. Or, yeah, I'd say fifth. Is a reasonable spot, and if you said to a Derry fan before the season started fifth, they wouldn't agree. They'd say they'd finish fourth or third. But if you said it to them now, they'd be pretty happy with that. I'd say, um, yeah, they have, they do have really good players as well. But I can't see them getting past fifth place this year. Into the Europe spots now, and it's Saint Pat's. I've gone for in fourth. Most people would have said Derry in fourth, probably before the start of the season, not so much now. But uh, six games in and uh, Derry are a point above the relegation zone. So St. Pat's have got off to a good start, they're currently sitting in fifth. Stephen Bradley's done a great job with them since he came in. I think it's Stephen Bradley, is it? Is that his name? Um, and he's a good manager and they have a good squad. However, Ronan Hale has left the club two days ago, so that's a big blow for the club. He was a great player. I think, in my opinion, though, they still should get Europe. They definitely should be competing for every year. They haven't last year. I think they did the year before and a few years before that. But I think this year they're going to get Europa League qualifiers in fourth place. I've gone for St. Pat's.
Oh yeah, and considering they just drew one all against Dundalk in Oriel Park, uh, that's a huge result for their season. Um, and the goal coming from former Dundalk man Robbie Benson, that is also a good thing for them. But yeah, so fourth, and that could even boost their season even more. Into the top three now, and I've gone for Bohemians. Keith Long has done some job with Bows in the past six years, I think he's been there. And with the likes of Danny Mandrell in the squad, I don't, I, they shouldn't be uh, like out of the top three even. But even out of the top four is like, out of the top three they shouldn't be. And out of the top four would just be impossible nearly. So one more, so I think that's the second Europa League qualifier spot, the second Europe spot I've given. And it's Bowers with They've got off to a good start as well. They lost the first game against Rovers, Dublin Derby, obviously. Uh, but they've got off to a good start apart from that. They bet Cork yesterday 1-0. And, yeah, I think they should have another good season this year. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say third. But they could, well, now I was about to say they could push on to second. But it's Dundalk and Rovers who are at the top. So, now we're going to see who have put in second and who have put in first. So in second place, I've put Dundalk. Yeah, they've won the league 2018, I think, 2019. Uh, and they won it 2014, I think, 15, 16, maybe. Uh, but they have won it a good few times. And they've done really good in Europe as well. Uh, beating Bate 3-0 in 2016 in the Europa League qualifiers, I think it was, second leg. Uh, so, but now they have, Stephen Kenny's gone, obviously, and they have Vinnie Pert, I believe. Yeah, Vinnie Pert as a manager. He's done a good job with them, but I think second place for me, it's pretty obvious that it'll be these two Rovers and Dundalk competing for the next few years for the titles, like Liverpool and C. But I can't see anyone overtaking Dundalk, and I can't see Dundalk overtaking Rovers. Uh, even though Dundalk have a really good squad, it, they have an old squad. I don't think they have much young players in their squad. Like the goalkeeper, Gary Rogers, he's, what, 36, 35. Uh, a few other defenders are old. Pat Hubin, he's, like, 32, 31. Um, Brian Gartland, one of their defenders, he's in his 30s as well. So that their squad is very old. But I can see them finishing second and not first considering they are now five points behind Rovers who are at the top. And in first place, League of Ireland champions, I think, for 2020 is going to be Shamrock Rovers. I've gone for Rovers because this season they've been amazing so far. Uh, six games, six wins, I believe. And Dundalk don't look like catching up to them. As I said, they're five points ahead of Dundalk. And Stephen Bradley, since joining in 2016, has done a great job with them. And they also have, in my opinion, the two best players in the league, Jack Barton and Graham Bark. You can say Michael Duffy, you can say another few players, but I think it's them too. Um, so, yeah, I think the Hoops are going to win it this year. And, like, look at their stadium and take away brand Look at their stadium and Derry Stadium compared to the rest of the league. They're, like, even just Tala. It's like well better than every other stadium in the league, so they're ahead of everyone in terms of facilities. Football now they have better squad. They have really good squad depth. They're ahead of everyone in loads of things. So I'd say Rovers are gonna win the Premier Division. So onto the fourth division now, and in tenth place of put at Lawn Town. Um, so I've gone for Lawn Town because four games in they've lost every game. They lost against Wexford 3-1 and that was a home. So that's like, that just shows that they're not a good, they don't have a good team at the moment. But Adrian Carberry, he has a project in his hands. Uh, as long as it's a project, um, in a few years they're going to be a good, good, good side. But at the moment they're just not and I can see them finishing 10th. In ninth place of when for Rovers B, obviously they got a two two draw against us on uh, yesterday, but uh they'll probably go and finish eighth or seventh, cause I think most people un under underestimated them, uh 
before the season started. They obviously drew one all against Galway as well. So they don't even have a half bad squad. Um, I so I think the yeah Rovers being ninth, but they probably could finish in eighth at highest. Um, they're not, they're not like a really really bad squad. Obviously they drew two two against us. Um, the reason I thought that we'd win four 0 is because we just bet UCD five one. Uh, a few months before that we bet Cabin Teeley five one, and we in earlier that season we bet Cabin Teeley five nil away. But obviously that was last year. Uh, the Cabo and the two Cabo games, but. Yeah, I think Rovers be ninth. Eighth place I've gone for Wexford. Uh, Wexford got a good result against Adlone on the weekend, 3-1 win away, but still can't see them finishing that high. Yeah, they've uh, made a good uh, few like really good signings, but I still can't see them finishing that high in the table. Um, they haven't had a great season so far i don't think it's not been too bad to be honest but nothing special and their team isn't anything special either but it's again like that that in a few years or even this season they could finish uh seventh even but i just don't see it happening seventh place i've gone for galway now i remember i done a predictions i think it was at, at the start of the season on instagram and I predicted Galway to finish fifth or fourth, I believe. Don't really know. It's probably because of the signings that they made. But now I think they're gonna finish seventh. Obviously, they lost two 0 against Cabo, and they haven't had a good season so far. Yeah, they. Uh, it's four games in. Uh, but I just think that they're gonna finish seventh again. Could could finish sixth. Could even finish fifth. But I just see it as seventh. Or Galway, uh, they're not. A, they're not even. They're a good. They have a good squad, but I don't know if the players have just. Mm, the new players haven't noticed how they play yet, or God knows. But they have some really good players like Kevin Farham, Michael Sligerman, and obviously them two years play for Jordan. Michael Sligerman's probably the best Jordan keeper of all time, um, and they have a good few. They have another few other good players. They made a lot of signings as well, so I think that it's going to be seventh would be a good position for them, but I think they could finish higher. Sixth place have gone for UCD. I've gone for UCD in sixth because, yeah, they got slapped 5-1 by us, but they also got a 0-0 draw against Longford to the uh, Friday. So that's uh, that was a huge result for them. That could have got their season back on track. I don't see them finishing in the top five, but uh, they could they could do it, but I don't see it happening. They don't even have a bad squad. They have the likes of Yo-Yo Maddy, who was probably one of the, who was one of the best players in the first division. Last season, he was really good in the Premier Division also, but I don't see them getting in top five. But there is a possibility, as always. I just can't see it happening the top five now and in fifth place i've gone for cove ramblers i've gone for cove because they've had a good season so far they got a great result nil nil away against bray on friday that's a really good result for the team they've made some good signings they've managed to keep david harley i think his name is david harley or connor harley they've managed to keep him um he's probably their best player they have a really good squad um good manager as well I like Cove, a good club. Uh, I can see them finishing fifth, but that's the highest I could see them. Um, even sixth or seventh, they probably would take. They'd probably take that. Um, but uh, they could shock us. They could finish fourth. They could finish anywhere. Like you never know with this division, especially. I've gone for them in fifth though. Into the playoff spots now. Well, the playoffs might be changing. I think, but. Uh, for fourth place, I've gone for Bray Wanderers. They have had a good season, I think, so far. Uh, that result against Cove was probably disappointing. They did lose, as I said. Um, oh, what's his name? The two players to draw the league, Havana and oh, I forget the other player's name. 
Uh, but they were two good players and they've lost them. But I think they could still have a good season and finish fourth. I don't see them going up. Um, but I could see them finishing fourth at highest. Maybe third. Maybe. It's a possibility. But yeah, fourth for me. Into the top three now and third I've gone for Longford. I've gone for Longford because Cab and Teeley are four, game, four games, four wins. I think... I they're having a great season. Well, obviously they're having a great season. Longford aren't having a bad season, but draw nil nil against UCD. That's a that's a bad result for them. Uh, I can see them finishing second or even first. Yeah, it's a possibility. Top three is gonna be really tight this year. Draw that Cabin Tealy and Longford. I've gone for in the top three. That's not an order. Well, never know if it's an order. But I've um yeah gone for Longford and third and they could finish first even or second you never know if they finish third or second i don't really see them going up by the playoff because i've put cork in the playoff but yeah long for third yeah it was an order uh second place is cabin Teeley. i've gone for them in second yeah they've had a great season but it's only four games in and obviously i'm going to be biased and put draw on first but i don't even think it's being biased i can just i can see draw that finishing top uh cabin Teeley have had an amazing season they do have good players like uh marty waters he's a lot the club isn't he so i forget who else it was that left but yeah they ha they do have really good players um so i can see them finishing second i can see them finishing first as well they probably have more of a chance of finishing first than longford do but i'm gonna probably be biased here yeah and you know who's gonna be first um so let's get on to that first place obviously i've gone for drada they're my team uh as you know but i can see them winning the league this year they were unlucky they came second last year but this year and then they obviously lost in the playoff final in the second leg but this year i think it's their year uh, i've been saying that for the past couple of years but uh yeah hopefully it is our year we have a great squad we have three amazing keepers chris Lyons and jordan adiyamo up front they're like really 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 good uh qpr interest in jordan adiyamo uh, uh, according to some reports um but yeah draw that in first place for me and obviously have a great squad they have great squad depth even they have like three or four good center backs three amazing goalkeepers good left backs good right backs uh good midfielders good wingers good everything so uh yeah i've gone for draw in first place